Hi, my name is Neil Blevins, and this is a tutorial about subdivision surfaces using support edges. And uh, for this example, I'll be using 3D Studio Max. However, the theory applies to all of the major 3D packages out there. So to start, let's just start with the simplest example. Uh, if I take a cube and I subdivide it, and uh, in Max I just have hotkeys which will subdivide the mesh or unsubdivide the mesh. This is kind of similar to uh, in Maya, you have the, the three and the one keys that will do uh, the, the same thing. So if you subdivide this without any support edges or creasing, uh, you end up getting a sphere. Now what if you want, you still want your cube, you just want nice beveled edges. That's where you need to add the support edges. So let's go in and do this. And there's a number of ways of doing it. Um, the one I'll show you is Swift Loop, which is one of the tools up here. And I will add support edges around all of our original edges here. And now you can see, as we increase the subdivision, it retains its original shape, but has these nice bevel edges, which are both nice because you end up getting these nice uh, light glints here. Uh, so instead of just a flat surface here and a flat surface there, you end up getting uh, the, the nice edges. And also, e every object out there uh, in real life actually has a little bit of uh, beveled edge to it. You just have to get uh, you know really close to it to see. And depending on how close or how far away you place the support edge, you end up getting more smoothing or less smoothing. So if you want your bevel to be incredibly small, move your support edges as close as possible to the uh, original edges, or if you want it uh, more smooth, you push it further away. Now, as I said, there's a number of different ways of doing this. Um, that was using the Swift Loop method, and there's another method, uh, which is you select these uh, edges here, and then you can go into your editable poly and you can go connect. And then you ask for two edges, and then you press the pinch, and then that will get it uh, around the edges closer to your original edges. And then you do uh, another set, and then you do another one. So this produces exactly the same results. Um, the reason I tend to use, well, the reason you'd want to use this is if you want really mathematically perfect. Uh, placement of these edges. I mean, this distance to that distance is identical to this distance to that distance. Whereas with the uh, Swift Loop method, you're manually sort of eyeballing it. But personally, I like the eyeballing method. Number one, because it's a lot faster to do, or I find it faster. And then second of all, is that every object is never mathematically perfect. And so I find that um, by doing it manually, it just adds a little bit of extra chaos in there, which uh, actually produces results that I think look more realistic. Now, support edges versus creasing. Um, in other 3D packages, uh, such as Maya, for example, or Moto, they um, have uh, full Catmull Clark creases. And what this is, is you can just, you don't have to add support edges. You can actually just go in and immediately grab any of your, um, like grab all six of these edges and then put a crease value. And it does exactly the same thing. And that's really cool because it means you don't have as many edges and faces on your object. So your object can be a lot lighter, which has a big advantage. But the disadvantage of using a crease versus support edges is that um, with creasing, uh, it's not as universally uh, accepted. Basically, every single 3D package has a way of smoothing something um, and then um, with support edges. But only some of the 3D packages actually uh, support proper creasing. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want to um, um, move stuff around between different packages a lot, then I might uh, suggest adding the support edges instead of using creases, because it'll be easier to move it to any package, uh, as opposed to only uh, being able to use certain packages, because only certain packages have the creasing. There are also some um, plugins which uh, can do this for you automatically. Like there's one here called Edge CHEX, and that will add um, support edges around the main edges of various objects automatically for you. Uh, I'm not going to show it here just because I only have a demo version uh, installed on this computer. But uh, certainly worth looking into and certainly worth trying out. Uh, but I have found that um, none of these plugins does it right in every single case. And so in the simple cases, you know, feel free to use this sort of stuff. But it's always good to know the manual way, just so that you can either clean up the results that it gives you, or uh, you can uh, use it anywhere when you don't have a plug-in handy. So let's move on to a couple of other primitives. Um, this is a cylinder, and if you do that, that really, really, it's not uh, a sphere like uh, the cube example, but it um, still is far too smoothed for what you generally want. So in the case of a cylinder, um, I'll use our friend Swift Loop again. 
you tend to want to put uh, one at the bottom, one at the top, and then one on the top edge and one on the bottom edge. And then you get much more of the result that you're, uh, you're probably after. And again, the closer this is, uh, the smaller the bevel, or the further away it is, the uh, more uh, smooth the bevel is. Now let's do something just a tiny bit more complex. And so here's this wedge shape here. And the thing about shapes like this is there's always, you, you always need to add more support edges than you initially think you need to. And so it's always good to test out uh, the result as often as possible to make sure you're getting the results you expect so you don't miss any edges. So let's go in and I'll use um, Swift Loop again. And I'll start adding some support edges on here, kind of similar to the box example that we did before. And if we smooth this, we can see that this is correct, but then there's this really smooth area here, which uh, you know might actually be a shape you, you need or want at some point, but in this case, we, uh, we don't want that. And so you have to add a bunch of extra edges. You've got to add one here, then one here, and then one here, and then one here. Now when you do it, you get the, exam uh, the, the results that you're, you're looking for. So it's very frequent, even with, with me, you know, even though I've done this a lot, that I'll add like uh, the, the, some extra edges here, but I'll forget one of them. So that's why it's really good to constantly be checking, constantly uh, smoothing the mesh to make sure you haven't missed anything. Because it's really easy to miss something, especially when you have much more uh, complex examples. Now, since a lot of stuff um, is made up of simple primitives, uh, especially more complex, uh, like robotic objects and whatnot, what I actually have done is I've actually created uh, my own set of primitives, which you can see here. And these are very similar to many of the max primitives, except I've gone in and I've already added the necessary support edges. So uh, I have a cylinder, and uh, then I have a cylinder without a top or bottom. I have a cube, um, a tube. So the tube is like the cylinder, except instead of just one edge around the outside, you got to add edges around the inside as well. Um, sphere, which actually just is a regular sphere. This sort of wedge, um, rounded wedge object, which I tend to use for a lot of stuff. Uh, and then um, basically a, a box with a, a hole going through, through the center. And a couple notes about uh, some of these. You'll note that I have um, eight sides on my cylinder. Uh, when you create a regular cylinder, it gives you a lot more sides, which is fine if that cylinder is just going to remain a cylinder. But since this is meant for smoothing, you actually uh, want to use fewer faces because you don't need all of those extra faces in order to get a smooth result because this is going to be, once it's smooth, you get a, um, a nice uh, smooth result here without those extra uh, initial faces. And how many faces to use is, you know, it's up to you. It's a bit of a, a controversy. Um, if you use just four faces, you'll still get something kind of cylindrical, uh, and that might be fine if it's a really, really small tube somewhere, but if you want um, a little bit more detail, you really need six or eight uh, sides in order to make sure you get something that is really cylindrical. Um, and uh, so each one of these has exactly like that. That is eight sides, this is eight sides, this is eight sides, which I've just tended to find is, a, is sort of a, a nice uh, number of sides to do these sort of things. So when I'm building much more complex objects, I just merge these into my scene and I'll grab these and pull them in instead of using the regular max primitives because they're already set up fully for these subdivisions. And one last little note. Um, there are some people who use things like uh, uh, chamfers instead of using uh, support edges along with subdivision surfaces to make their models, um, especially in sort of the early previs or concept phase of things which is totally fine. It, it is faster to do, but the disadvantage is that if that mesh at some point is going to be handed off to a visual effects company or an animation company or being used by some other person somewhere else, chances are at some point uh, some poor person in a modeling department somewhere is going to have to go in and add all these support edges manually so that they can use uh, um, subdiv surfaces. And so that's why I tend to, even though it takes a little bit more time, I tend to uh, fully set up all of my stuff uh, with the support edges already done. That way that I'm not passing on the task of doing that to uh, somebody down the line. So this tutorial was uh, just some of the basics. And uh, later on I'll do a more advanced one where I get into some more complex shapes and whatnot. But uh, consider this a, a primer for um, the, the basics of how to set up the support edges. 
So thank you very much for watching and uh, please visit my website at neilblevins.com for more tutorials on a number of subjects and uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to be notified next time I post a new video. Thank you very much.